Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading the iPhone 12. From the phone that deters third party repair, there's actually a hidden upgradable part. One not even Apple told you about. In fact, in almost all countries around the world, you cannot buy an iPhone with this feature. I am of course talking about the dual SIM iPhone. While a large amount of phone companies offer dual SIM options, Apple only offers phones with a single SIM card slot and a digital SIM in most countries around the world except China. And that got me thinking, what if I took a SIM card reader from the Chinese model and put it into a US model iPhone? The US model is the only iPhone to ship with the 5G millimeter wave, but it still only has one SIM slot. Would it accept it? Would it transform this phone into a dual SIM model, creating a configuration no iPhone has ever come in? So I decided to find out. I purchased a dual SIM replacement for a Chinese iPhone 12 for $24. In the package was the tray, reader, and eject pin. The replacement upgrade parts look almost exactly the same. However, at a close inspection, you can see the contacts on both sides of the slot. While it looks like it's just going to screw right in, it's going to come down to the software and whether it will allow this change. But before we get started, I'd like to thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Repair just about anything with one of their many toolkits. Whether you're just starting out or looking for a professional toolkit, they've got you covered. Get yours at ifixit.com slash Jeffries or at the link below. For this experiment, I'll be using this iPhone 12 I repaired a few weeks ago. It's fully functional and is a single physical SIM model with an additional digital SIM. While you can run two phone numbers, if your carrier doesn't support digital SIM or you already have two physical SIM cards, this configuration doesn't work. As the SIM tray is modular and the phone already has two IMEI numbers, I'm hoping this upgrade will just override the digital SIM and use its IMEI number. It's time to get inside and perform this upgrade. I'll start by removing the two pentalobe screws from the bottom and place the device on a heat plate at 120 degrees for a few minutes in an aim to soften the adhesive holding the screen on. A heat gun or powerful hairdryer can also be used if you don't have access to one of these heat plates. Even though this phone has been opened and repaired, the new adhesive was just as strong as the original, meaning it's adequately keeping out dust and water from entering this phone. We'll need to break that seal with a plastic pick so we can get up our display panel and get access to that SIM card reader. Working my pick around the perimeter of the phone, I can slice through the adhesive and unlatch the display clips on the top and sides. Once the display is free, we can move it to the left hand side of the phone, propping it up with an eye hold tool. Once the display is lifted up and out of our way, we can remove its flex cables underneath. We first need to remove two brackets using a tri-wing screwdriver bit, which came in my iFixit ProTech toolkit. Then I can proceed to disconnect the battery and three display cables. With the display loose, we can pull it away from the frame of the phone. Inside, there's a lot of different parts and screws but the SIM reader is one of the most easy to access. It's unusual to see a modular SIM reader, but Apple has chosen to go this route in the iPhone XR, 11, and 12. It's time to get it out, and to do that, I'll first need to remove the SIM card tray itself and move the eject pin out of the way. Proceeding, there's four tri-wing screws and two brackets that will need to be removed. This will give me access to the flex cable that will need to be disconnected, which runs to the SIM card reader itself. Two more screws need to be unfastened before the reader can be removed entirely. Comparing the two, there are a few additional components on the PCB as well as each having their own QR code, likely containing the serial number. Hopefully no issues will arise like we saw with the displays, batteries and cameras. One other notable difference between the two is of course the original reader lacks the second side of pins. As for the SIM card tray, well it's got a slight different mechanism on the second side. We'll install the new reader back into place, securing it down with its several screws. I'll reconnect the flex cable and the two brackets which attach on top. Before reattaching the display, I'll need to remove the old adhesive. This can be done by pulling it up with your finger or using a pair of tweezers, twisting it around. I found the tweezers method to work best, but it takes longer and is more tiring on your fingers. Once the frame is cleaned up, it's time to do the same to the display. With that, our iPhone 12 has a new dual SIM reader installed and is ready to be reassembled. 
We'll start by installing the new adhesive. Lining it up into place, I can press it down with a spudger. Removing the top layer of protective film will give us access to the inside of the phone so we can reattach our display panel. As the phone has already been repaired, nothing else needs to be fixed. I'll connect the screen's three cables and fasten the two remaining brackets. It's always good practice to test functionality before fully sealing down the display. So I'm going to power up this phone and you can see it's running as well as it was before. In settings, you can see it's now displaying front and back SIM and not physical SIM and digital SIM. It's now finally time to seal up our iPhone 12. I'll clean off any dust or fingerprints inside the phone using a microfiber cloth and remove the protective film over the adhesive for the display. After that's been done, we can simply seat the display panel back into place and fasten the two pantalobe screws at the bottom of the iPhone. With the phone back in one piece, it's time to see if all this work paid off. I'll install two SIM cards into the phone and power it up. Upon booting into iOS, we are greeted with a setup wizard for configuring the two installed SIMs. Here we can choose the labels and set the default card. And with that, we're done. So this is it, a dual SIM 5G millimeter wave iPhone 12. A configuration you cannot buy from Apple. I'm amazed this actually worked. Not just because we upgraded the internals of a phone, but as many of the modular components in the iPhone 12 are locked by software, limiting their functionality after third-party repair. For example, losing battery health after a battery replacement, losing True Tone after a display swap, or losing Face ID after new front cameras or an earpiece is installed. Testing, you can see I'm able to make phone calls using both lines. Good evening. Welcome to voicemail. There are insufficient funds for you to make this call. Given how easy it was for me to create a dual SIM iPhone, I don't understand why Apple wouldn't give people the opportunity to buy one in most places around the world. Seems like a missed opportunity. This should work on any iPhone with a modular SIM reader, which includes the 10R, 11, and 12. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.